Well, uh, Ambassador Winkler, distinguished guests, uh, it's an honor for me to be with you, and I bring you all greetings from President Obama. Uh, it is very fitting, indeed, that we gather to discuss transatlantic relations 20 years and one day after the fall of Berlin Wall. I'm sure many of you remember well this monumental event and Austria's own role in the months preceding the fall of the wall. In that period, more than 51,000 Germans, East Germans, transited through Hungary and, and Austria into then West Germany. Moreover, in the two decades since, Austria has played an important role in reestablishing ties with Eastern European countries through trade and investment, of course, but also, and perhaps even more importantly, in continued diplomatic efforts and security commitments in the Western Balkans. Speaking in Berlin on the eve of yesterday's historic anniversary, Secretary of State Clinton reviewed aspects of the transatlantic partnership that helped bring down the Iron Curtain and the end of the Cold War. And she said she called for a stronger partnership among us to bring down the walls of the 21st century. She said, when we all come together to uphold the common good, there is no constellation of countries on Earth that has greater strength. There is no wall we cannot topple. I must admit, I am not Secretary Clinton's speechwriter, nor is she mine. But tonight, I too would like to make some observations about the foreign policy of the United States under President Obama and specifically transatlantic relations. In addition, I will touch on US-Austria relations where appropriate and we'll leave some time for questions. So in standing before you, I confess it is hard for me to appreciate how much has changed this past year in the world, in my own country, and in my own life. Last November, after then-Senator and President-elect Obama won the election, I basked in his success, as many of us did, who played a role in helping to bring it about. We were all quite proud. But I had no idea that a year later, I would be standing in front of a distinguished audience at the Diplomatic Academy in Vienna. Who knows the things that can happen in life? The President-elect, however, soon focused my mind on Austria when he asked me to serve as his personal representative here. I consulted my principal advisor, my wife Donna, and we agreed that this would be an incredible and unique opportunity. And the rest, as they say, is Geschichte. More seriously, I agreed to the President's request because I really wanted to serve him and serve my country. And I would say, in particular, to help repair those ties that had become frayed in the transatlantic relationship. As a businessman and as a tourist, I had traveled the world. I had seen the way uh, attitudes had shifted towards the United States. I was dismayed by the criticisms that I heard about our country. And indeed, my passion for restoring our reputation in the world is what first led me to the presidential campaign and to the level of commitment that I made to the campaign in my time and my energy. As President Obama said in his address to the UN General Assembly in September, he, quote, took office at a time when many around the world had come to view America with skepticism and distrust. Part of this was due to misperceptions and misinformation about my country. Part of this was due to opposition to specific policies and a belief that on certain critical issues, America has acted unilaterally without regard for the interests of others. And this has led to an almost reflective, a reflexive anti-Americanism, he said, which too often has served as an excuse for collective inaction." End quote. And you know, there's some truth to all of that. In response, the President has both altered certain policies and reached out to engage and respectfully consider the opinions and concerns of our friends and allies. Welcome, Ambassador. Uh, for example, President Obama made the decision, harshly criticized by some, to participate in direct dialogue with Iran. This is some, not something the United States had done, and he was criticized at home for this. He sought 
Also, a new beginning with the Muslim world, delivering a major address in Cairo to build a relationship between my country and Islamic peoples based on mutual interest and mutual respect. In the ten, ten months of the new administration, there have been several important decisions and measures. Allow me to mention a few. On his first day in office, the President explicitly banned the use of torture by the United States, prohibiting controversial interrogation practices, which had been employed in certain instances in the wake of the devastating 9-11 terrorist attacks. In this year of global economic stress, the United States has worked closely with the G20 to devise an international response of more than $2 trillion to help the global economy recover. Despite the heavy impact of the global recession, U.S.-European economic linkages have remained vital. And it's important to remind ourselves how important and how central the economic partnership between the United States and at the other side of the Atlantic and Europe are, is. The U.S. and E.U. together account for nearly 55 percent of global GDP, some $31 trillion annually, and transatlantic trade alone makes up 40 percent of the total, total global trade. So in this connection, trade is critical, our ties are strong, and indeed I would also mention and highlight and commend Austria's own decisive engagement through its banks to help stabilize the economies of several Eastern European countries. In addition, the President has gone further. He also ordered the closing of the Guantanamo detention facility. With the help of other nations, including several in Europe, detainees are being released and resettled. Although it may surprise some in a European audience, powerful voices in the United States argued for continuing the operation in Guantanamo. If we're to succeed in showing that it can be closed responsibly, we need the continued assistance of our partners around the world who have effective and humane resettlement programs. The more support the President receives from Europe in this regard, the better he will be able to deal with this problem domestically. For its part, Austria has in the past distinguished itself as a safe haven for refugees and others who are unable to live in their homelands. And it's our hope that your government will be able to look at the other EU member states, including some of your neighbors, and judge whether their experience is insightful in helping to resettle former Guantanamo detainees. And perhaps this might mean you might decide that Austria could play a role in helping U the U.S. resolve this issue and close the facility. In Iraq, the United States is responsibly ending the war there as the Iraqis take over responsibility for their own security. Recent violence reminds us that security remains a challenge in Iraq, but we are confident that the time has come for the Iraqis to shoulder this burden themselves. On nuclear proliferation, the President has outlined an ambitious agenda, comprehensive agenda, to seek the goal of a world without nuclear weapons. Let me repeat that. A world without nuclear weapons. Think of it. Meanwhile, the Ru Russia and the United States are hard at work on a new agreement to substantially reduce warheads and launchers. This is, you know, groundbreaking, but it doesn't stop there.